don't do it. Uh... Hey everyone, and welcome back to the episode. So today I think it's mostly going to be about Grant. It's been a while since we've seen her, and last we heard from Nun Creed, she might be the reason why the whole town gets iced over. So I think it's about time we check in on her and see if we can save the town. And obviously Grant, if she is our Grant. So let's see. Catch up to Nun Creed. All right. I still don't want to believe Grant is evil. This looks mm -hmm. familiar, yeah. I forgot they actually, so in this timeline, Luca hasn't seen that this is the real Beacon Pines. Maybe we can clear off the snow. No time Nun Creed's getting away. I guess this time we won't be able to know. Do we not notice it's exactly the same? Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well versed in all things Beacon Pines. But this does look like some sort of frozen replica of town. Ah, I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nun Creed's an alien. <laughs> has nothing to do with any of the facts. We're in Beacon Pines. Rolo, stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is our base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. <laughs> we found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. Final objective, kill us all and shapeshift into Beacon Pines citizens of their choosing. That's a lot. <laughs> and definitely not true. You never really had me, but you very much lost me there. <laughs> you get used to it, we should keep moving. I don't see how they can't tell this is the real Beacon Pines. As they rounded the corner to the frozen Damn. town square, they spotted Mr. Nungreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. Grand. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. She's gonna burn him? Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nungreed was after. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Don't do it! Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Oh, Graham. Judabar, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, doom this whole town. If he's telling the truth, that she's the reason why everything ice is over in the replica of Beacon Town, Beacon Pines. We definitely have to stop her. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Grant? Oh, what's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Mr. Nuncreed turned back toward the kids. Desperation in his eyes. You've been pretty involved, Grant. We know pretty much a big chunk. Listen to your grandma, Luca. It's between me and Juniper. Rolo went back, held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back to stop her. Grant, his voice growing louder. Got it all wrong, Juniper. She doesn't trust you. I think it's best we talk to her. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. Oh, his father, Luca's father told her. He trusted you, but you betrayed that trust. So is she our real grandma then? Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreen winced with anguish. But I know Nuncreen in the last episode told us that he knew Walt pretty well and they were partners. But Nuncreen was a little selfish and wanted more, which sharper balance I could offer. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. He had different ideas about how to affect change. A sellout. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. I think that is fair. He did sell out. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Ooh, what's gonna be the of emotions charm. and memories? Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed 
as if to give him the stage. And in the stillness, he began to... If we start crying, do you think Graham would come to us? Hum seems rather random. <laughs> Let's see if we can stop her. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Aww. Hopefully Gran comes to Gran us. stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. Oh, please don't tell me we're actually egging her on. This all makes sense to you, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up. Don't do it, Gran. the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. We can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once your precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea. Gran. Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. Oh, no. Gran. Don't do it. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole punctuated with a thunderous thud I was like, okay well nothing's been frozen over just yet you see joseph i've learned one very important lesson in life if you want things to change you must be willing to before gran could finish the ground shook her to silence is it happening She was coming over to Luca, though. Gran only had time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching Aww. love pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place forever. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. So it definitely was the grand. End. It definitely was grand that well, froze that over the dire. city. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. <laughs> now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Fair, we can do that. Okay, so we can either go back there and hum. Oh, and then we have to either actually give Iggy up. Ugh, I don't like either option. Let's go back to Gran real quick. Okay, let's see if hum does anything. And in the stillness, he began to hum. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. Oh, so it sweet. was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. Maybe that Gran recognized melody that. pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. Oh, he's resigned. Gran, look at us. We need you not to drop that torch. Gran lowered the torch, listening closely. Oh, she did. As she recognition did. slowly set in, her heart sank. Those countless nights of consolation, the incomparable loss they shared together. She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. Oh, fantastic. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. She definitely loves Luca. I don't know if she's the his real grandma, but tears. she really does love him. She began to hum along, note for note. Aww. Luca lifted his head in astonishment. The last time he heard that melody was the last night he saw his mother. Poor thing. And his mother was supposedly kidnapped. How do you know? I'm so sorry, my little buckaroo. Buckaroo. That's what his dad called him. The only people who call me that are my dad and your mother. Luca blinked through blurry, watery eyes, trying to see more clearly. 
Wait, what? He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. Is that his, his mom? He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Wait, 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 wait. How? Only smaller, older, changed. Mom? Is... Is that his mom? That's right, Bakuru. Mom? But how? Why? Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. How could she be that old? And why would she pretend to be his grandma? Uh, Eleanor. Thought you were gone. Should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. How? Do you think like she must have touched something or got like uh, like the goop that was on uh, Iggy? If that had anything to do with her aging quickly. You're a smart man, Joseph. I thought we could have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I don't understand any of this. What happened to you? Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? It tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it's better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. We were bad people, Luca. Oh, we know. <laughs> we definitely know. They won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. And what do we do? We have to stop them. Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. By, but not by throwing the fire into the, the whole place. They can't be stopped. This is too big. There has to be a way. We have to figure out who the perennial harvest guy is working for. I try beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. Aww. No more lies. I see now there's a better way to stop perennial harvest. I think you could easily just bring everyone here. The cold, hard truth. Exactly. Bring them here. Like, literally, guys. The whole other city here is exactly the same as Beacon Pines. And this is the original. Luca gazed down at Nuncrete with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow as if searching it for answers. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. Yeah! Let's go. So how involved is Nuncrete? Is he just involved enough to get a payday out of it? You don't understand. He always wins. It's a little ominous. Chapter 9. The Devil You Know. Ooh. Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. Ooh, she that's stopped cool. in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen key card worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. Where would she get the key card from? She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. Is that the She uh, rushed Nenkrit to the desk place? and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquamen. Tempest Liquamen? There were dozens of them. Every one stamped failed. What is Eleanor that? Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. Let's see who's there. And that is what Chain is all about. Oh, we got here. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change the choice. And tickle pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar. Go ahead, you tell him, Mom. <laughs> Excuse me. I will not. 
He just matches you like, I am Eleanor. <laughs> this town has a dangerous secret, and perennial harbors only exist to keep it hidden. Nonsense. Picked up the whole damn town and moved it right under our noses. That I still don't know how they did, and I really want to know. You aren't in making any sense, Dare. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's not like we could actually take everyone, move them here, move all the important stuff, and make you forget about the other place. Nah. Oh, well, thinking about it, maybe that serum had to do with the fact that no one remembered being moved here. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. But wouldn't you know, like... This is not in the same place, so wouldn't you recognize the fact that you're going a different route to the city? But while they had us evacuated... Mrs. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to... You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. <laughs> this is growing tiresome. A little help, please. Oh, his little goons. Don't you all see? This festival's a sham. An excuse to have the whole town gather one place. So maybe his real boss is coming here. They're planning something awful. But what could they be planning? So I, it sounded like their whole point was to extract stuff out of Beacon Pines. So why would you want to destroy Beacon Pines? I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. Will you tell us? I am Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as the dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer were too good to be true. It was that. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry about this disruption. My associate will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So she can get the help she needs. Better not touch Eleanor, I'm telling you. She's not the one who's disturbed. Ooh, two time and clown. <laughs> Thank you for backing us up, Nun Creed. You all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. Why would the whole entire town look the other way? That's my question. The truth is, what is it? Slow clap. What's going on, Solomon? It's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncreed's face. Is he part of it? Yes, sir. Take them away. No, I want them to see this. Is Solomon behind it? Eris, do you not. Are you taking orders from your brother? Ah, the ever-temptuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. Ah! Oh, she looks wonderful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You've managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expect something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. We can really just take everyone to the real Beacon Pines. It's not too hard. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr. Yes, sir. So he is the one. So maybe that's why Nuncreed said that even after Sharper Valentine's death, he's still taking orders because it's his son who's taking it, has given the orders. It's a shame it's cut short, but I thank you for that rousing oratory. I'll take it from here. Yes, sir, of course, sir. Eris, do you know about this? You've done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the recompense we agreed upon. Recompense? Recompense? Kerr gave a bow of deference. Founder, you're most gracious. Whoa, wait. If Gran is really Eleanor, and she's older. Could Sharper Valentine be younger? Gasps rippled through the crowd. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. 
In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. Uh. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. Is this an age forward? You can all call me. Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. So that must have happened to Eleanor. That's why Nunkri said he's still taking orders. Literally, Sharper Valentine's still here. This is a story about change. Eris, did you know? What? No! Ah, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper examined his new hands. His new hands? So was he, like, really regenerated? Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? It's a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if you set the mood. Mr. Kerb, be a dear and feel the sign. Sharper Valentine Festival. Ha! Wonderful. Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Jeez, Brust this guy looked good all the festival. Sprinkled through the crowd. <laughs> Sharper, you malicious bastard! <laughs> Malice. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. Oh, I forgot he was the one that really hated him. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, it's not the time for audience and participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr? William Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. Are they taking him away? No! You coward! Bring him back! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? But how did you do it? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. No thank you. You're terrible. You're clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children. Okay, so we have Eris and Augustus, Gus, the mayor. Daddy. <laughs> That's not the expression I was hoping for. <laughs> thought he would be like, hey, oh my god, it's my dad. But nope. I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence. I don't think he's going to approve of what they've done. Squandered. To say I am disappointed would be an understatement. But I... Silence, Augustus. An adult is speaking. Ooh. I don't know which is worse. A son who is completely hopeless. Or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Eris, you fail me with admirable consistency. Dang. Why are they just taking this? Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Oh. Because I... Eris was helping Gran at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Father, I... Have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? She helped build the library. Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? I guess. But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. This dad is terrible. There's just no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? You should have done great, honestly. Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. Did Nuncree come up with some kind of... What, come up with a vial? I think you said enough. Nonsense. People deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. But he literally was gone for a while, at least, right? Or was he? You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. You are about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor, desperate to recapture his youth. Oh. I think he said he was an actor at some point. He played his part, and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, he remains loyal. 
But at this point, what are you going to do? Literally, the whole town knows this is a ruse. So you can't keep people here just forever. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already fritted away my goodwill. Beacon Pines is mine again. And I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Kirk was never in charge of perennial harvest? Ha! You think that Puff the Blatherski would have accomplished all of this? I don't think so, honestly. If he, he's literally just an actor. I guess he played the part well, but he didn't have the power that Valentine does. John, I suppose time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. But why did it take him so long to come back? You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for a spell. So I invented William Kerr. Take your bow, you've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Of course he would love it. <laughs> Patrick C. Montesquieu, this be an extraordinaire at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly was a role of a lifetime. Wait, so this Bill Kerr was a Pat C this whole time? <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I guess that makes sense. Now that your secret's out in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? Exactly. Oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears most. Oh, that's why they're getting all the information. Now will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. Like what? Like, how deep did they get? Like, I'm scared of spiders, and... You have a bunch of spiders in your house and it makes you stay home? I doubt it. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha, young hero. I've kept a keen eye on you, boy. You and your friends make a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity if things would have gone a bit differently. You might have had your moment of triumph. We're literally friends with Solomon. But that's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have one. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. Now time is my plaything. So does he live forever now? Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought, but well worth it. Ha! Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat, let's get to work, shall we? What kind of work? What are you doing? And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. Wow. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. But why are we still there? Literally, there, there can't be enough fear to make people stay in this Beacon town. Beacon Pines became famous. A secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Just gifts for a profit. that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. Oh, so maybe without, at one point, without that fertilizer, maybe they can ice over other towns as well. The end. Oh, this is terrible. I don't like this. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He of course not. No, no, no. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to leave it here for today. And I am so excited. I would never saw that coming, so it's crazy. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!